this is kind of interesting. So yesterday, Skip and Shannon on Undisputed doing the show, and uh, apparently, uh, you know, Shannon will go out and he'll he'll really uh, interact with people and yell and scream at the audience. And Skip Bayless just stays off it. He doesn't he doesn't you know he sees his like I do uh, his Twitter and Facebook as a promotional tool. He's not going to waste a lot of energy on yelling and screaming. But you know, everybody does it different in our business. Some politicians <laughs> go back at the public. Some media people do. Some singers. Some basketball players. Kevin Durant was in the news w- this week for going back uh, at a fan. And getting into a situation where he kind of took a shot at LeBron James because Kevin Durant went to social media to talk to a random guy. And Skip Bayless is like, why why are you doing that? And uh, and that was kind of my question. Like, what are you doing? You're a superstar in America. Like, stay out of the, you know, talking to eggs on Twitter. So anyway, uh, Durant then talked to Skip on social media. He said, hey, Skip, don't forget you're the voice of the people. Just because they disagree with you doesn't mean that you can cut them off completely. Look at your tweets, man. It's just sports talk. It's not life or death. You're taking the easy way out. Smiley face, smiley face. I think that's what you call those. Uh, That's why Shannon and I respond to people. It's fun. It's talking. It's sports. We played, so I see why you wouldn't get that. On the other hand, you are right, though. I need to also respond to the positive fans. Thank you and keep repping. Sometimes you got to handle uh, business, LOL. So it was good natured, and this happened about you know 24 hours ago. First of all, I think it's always interesting. Uh, Skip Bayless has a way of getting uh, athletes to respond. He's relevant, and uh, you know I think that's important in our business. But this is funny. So Kevin Durant went to Golden State to win a title, and therefore, so he wouldn't have to respond to any of his critics. And now, more than ever, Kevin Durant is responding to his critics. <laughs> He's never been more reactionary. He has never been more reactionary. And in our and they used to say this about umpires in baseball, that certain umpires have what they call rabbit ears, like they respond to everything. And an umpire has to be able to deal with, like, just sort of compartmentalize it. Fans can say what they want. Players in the dugout can say, just call balls and strikes. But KC, uh, KD actually admitted that like when he went to Golden State, he locked himself in a room for four days because he didn't want to hear the criticism. And I was thinking about this. Like, it is amazing that the, there are three or four athletes right now that I would put on Mount Crymore that they respond to criticism at an absurd level. Cam Newton, Kevin Durant, David Price of the Red Sox, and Odell Beckham. That they are incredibly reactionary to random thoughts, media thoughts, marginal criticism. And, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of fascinated by this. Is that Kevin Durant, now I don't think he's as good as LeBron, but you can make the argument that he was certainly uh, the best player in the NBA Finals. <laughs> he's taking shots at people on YouTube. Uh, I find it I find it really interesting. I mean, Cam's reactionary. Odell Beckham got into a fight with a kicking net. Uh, David Price with the Red Sox. I mean, he I've never seen an athlete that thin skinned. So some athletes can tune it out. Some athletes you put them on Mount Crymore. Uh, I do think Durant's a remarkable player, and there's nobody happier in the world that he's winning than I am. And, and by the way, I. I have never once in my life gone out of my way to get people to respond. I don't really care. If they do, they do. But when I criticized Dabo, I didn't criticize Dabo Sweeney. I said during the year last year, I'm like, I don't think Clemson's as good as all these other teams because Alabama's destroying everybody and Florida State. and And I started naming all these teams, Ohio State, and I'm like, they're all killing people. And Clemson should have lost four times. And then as soon as Clemson won the national title, their coach came out. Remember this? This was minutes after winning the title, took a shot at me. Uh, We left no doubt tonight. You know, we wanted to play Alabama uh, because now y'all got to change your stories. You got to change the narrative. Y'all got to mix it up. Uh, You know, the guy that called us a fraud, ask Alabama for a fraud, was his name Colin Coward? Ask him, I've never met him, don't know him. Ask him if, if we're Alabama for a fraud. Ask Ohio State if we're a fraud. Ask Oklahoma if we're a fraud. The only fraud is that guy. Because <laughs> he, he didn't do his homework. I hope y'all print that. <laughs> I got to be honest with you. I didn't intend for it to land that way. It did. But much like KD and Skip, it wasn't the worst day. 
if people react, some coaches hear everything, some coaches hear nothing. Saban fired back at Paul Feinbaum. It's you, you think these Jay-Zs and these great players, you think they're living in their mansions. You know what? They have a lot of free time because a lot of these rich people have people do their shopping and people get their groceries and people fix their cars. And they have a lot of free time. Regular guy in the streets going in a garage to put his own oil in. And he's going to the grocery store. And he's waiting in line at DMV. Superstars don't. They've got layers of people to do that. Translation, on their phone, four hours, nothing but free time. 